I want you to get together. The, um, the major contention a lot of people tend to have with, with God. Why does God allow bad things to happen? You know, and it's kind of, you'd be bored if there was a life where everything was perfect and he controlled every aspect of it. <laughs> you would not be happy with that. And I think a lot of people don't realize just how much they would hate it if everything was perfect all the time. And if God was fully controlling you all the time and dictating yeah. what you can and cannot do without choice. And it's kind of what I think what humans would do is they'd find a way to make things complicated. And <laughs> I think that's what I think that's what Adam and Eve did, you know, <laughs> in a way they found a way yeah. just to make it more complicated. And uh, again, that's that's so saith Paul. That's not the, what the Bible says. You know, that's, that's just me. That's just me humor <laughs> making a humorous observation, guys. Don't take that to, as gospel truth. OK, I'm not I'm not doing that. But uh that's kind of my first go-to and again i i thank most for most of the the um, the negative in my life at the time you know it was devastating when certain things happen oh yeah but you realize you know i told you my story about how i ended up leaving my old workplace you know i got attacked mm. by the member of the public i was being harassed by people at work and abused and used in horrible ways you know and i would say those five years of my life were hell as well as a blessing in many ways. It was a bit of both. Yeah. For, for all the times it was hell, I realized I am a much wiser, stronger, better person for yes. going through it, you know. Uh, but mm. at the time, you know, I was losing sleep. I was terrified. I had a baby on the way. I thought I was going to lose my job. And all these, it was it was so scary, you know. And mm -hmm. you're in this state of mind where it's horror and doom and gloom. Why me, you know? And it's easy to play the victim in those moments, sure. but Very easy. Very easy to get into that, that state of helplessness. Like, you know, yeah. what about the most high? Well, you know, help me out, man. Like, what, yeah. what, what what's going on? Well, in many, many, many ways, you know, my prayers were answered because my wife got me through it in ways I just I just cannot thank her enough for you know and I made a point of it in my in our wedding speech after it all you know that mm. it, it's kind of it, we got through it and we're better for it now and I'm in a much better position for it but at the end of it all here I am a year and a half later you know and it's kind of yeah what seems bad which you could you could shake your fist at God for at the time just wait the yeah. advice let's just see how mm. this pans out because you'll be surprised where it's going you know, and, and I guess people want to hold on to the worldly path that they've carved out for themselves. That brings them nothing but pain and misery. And you'll find, you know, if God's constantly nudging you to go towards his path for you, what he's got yeah. planned, and you realize once you take that leap of faith, this is better than anything I had mapped out for myself. You know, this is exactly what I wanted, in fact. Why was yeah. I fighting it for so long? Yeah. I, I see, I, I understand what I'm saying there for a lot of people falls on deaf ears because it's like, oh, shut up, Paul. Everything just worked out for you. It's not always that simple for everybody, you know. But I, I, I would take it takes it takes courage. But it isn't simple, Paul. No. You, you, you've <laughs> taken like a very, like, what, two minutes to say that, but they, that was a long, hard five years, man exactly it's not it doesn't happen overnight no you know and uh, it's, again it's taken me what a decade since being saved to fully drop all my addictions as well you know i quit nicotine at the start of the year last year um so i'm excellent um uh, and i think it was july so it's we're coming up on a year ago now but that's that was my final one you know that didn't happen overnight either and that was a long struggle with many other things you know it's mm. I, guess, I guess i don't know what i'm I'm rambling on a bit here now and then anyway this is this is about you noble so let's let's switch this around a bit you know i've got i've got i've got a question i've got a question yes. for you which uh is kind of what i like to get into in these truth of therapy sessions you know try to get mm -hmm. meta meta about what it means to be a truther for lack of a better phrase, I don't know what to call us really. But um, one thing I, I, I want to know is what major issues did you bump into when trying to tell friends and family <laughs> and loved ones these things? Um, because this is a make or break situation for a lot of people's relationships, this talking about this type of stuff, you know. And it's, it's it a lot of people have traumatic stories of it just blowing up in a disastrous way <laughs> and they lose everything and everyone around them, you know. And I like people t to tell me their traumatic, disastrous, explosive moments. So go and tell me yours. What happened? Um, I don't think it is. Uh, mm, let me just rattle my brains. Is there anything been explosive? Um, um, okay, harsh. Let's say harsh. <clears throat> Nothing majorly explosive. But what I would get, as most people <laughs> can relate, you've got a zeal 
and now I'm not necessarily talking um, on the spiritual path mm. and the and connecting with the most high. I'm talking about when you're waking up to it to it all. So I would come like every Saturday, we'd all go to my mother's. So you know the, the siblings would come, you know nieces, nephews, etc. I'm coming with my portable DVD player, and I've got at least five DVDs in there. And some, I'm just waiting for someone just to say just one single word. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's watch this because that will explain what you just said there. <laughs> and I hook it up to the television. There you go. Press play. And um, after two minutes, they're all talking. I'm like, yo, you, you come on. You got, you you're missing you missing the, the the detail. This is only like a it's only like an hour and a half. We don't need to watch all of it, but you know. And then I would hear. Shut up! <laughs> we don't want to hear none of these crazy stuff. You're on the internet too much. You need to stop all that. It, this is not. This is reality. That's the internet. It's not real. If it was real, it'd be on the television, noble. Why isn't it on the television if this stuff's real? That like you're saying. Wait a minute. The doctors, they, they take like seven years, dentists and stuff, and they prescribe fluoride. You're giving us documentaries and telling us fluoride's bad for us. What you're, You've lost your mind. You're crazy. I had that. I'm known as, as the crazy uncle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but of late, of late, especially when the um, <clears throat> zombie apocalypse... <laughs> and I won't go into too much detail, but we all know what, what I'm referring to. Mm. Um, I had so many people who said, I'm a crazy old coot, <laughs> saying, what's your opinions on all of this? What do you think? Please do tell. <laughs> and so I obviously provided the, you know, the information and allowed them to either drink or to do something else. And unfortunately, I would say at least 60% of them, they took it in and they made, and this is the odd thing. No, this is just the wonders of humanity. People can make the right noises and they can say all wonderful things, Paul, and they can profess, you know, well, I'll take this into podcasting and truth or in Christianity. They can sound and look on the veneer like they are literally walking on water like Yeshua HaMashiach, like <laughs> they're perfect, like everything is everything. But actions speak loud and words, showing and proving is way different to talking. Yeah. So we had conversations and they spoke and they said, blah, blah, blah. That makes so much sense. Yes, no way on earth, based upon our conversation, would I even entertain such folly? But fast forwards, and you know multiple times they've sought help etc etc and it's like you know you, there's only so much you can do and what i've realized the big thing for me is knowing when to stop and now it's not knowing when to stop it's knowing when to start <laughs> i i don't engage this form of conversation or this level of conversation until it presents itself to me yeah i went for so many years paul just go in and go here's i'd have literally in the car like i used to have i don't know maybe 20 plus dvds with just loads of different content on there depending on what level of of of, of knowledge base there was out there okay have these two dvds have a look at that that will get your knowledge based up if it was a learner here you go have this dvd um and then it got to a point as i said where you know you can lead them to the water but you cannot make them drink allow them to to, to get to a point or get somewhere and then meet them there so it may not be trying to help them with the food industry or the medical industry. It may be helping them financially. Like, oh, mm. oh, didn't you know that you could do this? So not even getting into like the fiat system and the, the petrochemical industry. No we, no, we don't need to do that. We can just give them practical knowledge to enable them to financially be better off. 
And then once you've solved that problem, hey, Noble, so, um, you know, that crazy stuff you was talking about 10 years ago, you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, I didn't tell you, you know, but I, a lot of it came to pass, you know. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. So what's your thoughts on this? And there we go. And then you give them the old Bible or you give them this and then the ball starts to roll. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're right. That's one of my major tips as well, which I try and tell people is learn when to shut up. <laughs> there's, a, there's a there's a time and place um, for these things. And again, you no one was ever convinced by beating them over the head with something, you know, and it's kind of they have they have to come to you first and ask and it may take years before they come to you and ask, but uh, if you were tactical enough not to burn that bridge, but make it clear that you know a thing or two, mm -hmm. then when things do come to pass, they they will they will eventually come and ask a few questions. And I've I've had it happen to me as well, you know. Um, yeah, some some sage advice from yourself there. Um, <laughs> absolutely, you know. And and I thought it's funny now. I've got to that point too. Where I'm past all the zeal. <laughs> and, you know, and it is like that when you wake up, though, isn't it? You want to tell everybody. Yeah. You want to get out there and you want to spread the truth and you want to wake everybody mm -hmm. up and you yeah. you shake them awake, slap them around the face, say, do you yeah. see? Look over there. Do you see what I see? You need yeah. to. You need to know what's going on. You're being deceived. Don't be a sheep, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. And you have that attitude, don't you? And and it, it took a long time, but, you know, eventually I figured it out through constant hitting myself up against brick walls that some people are just not supposed to know this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and when they're, when it's their time, it's their time. It's kind of what let go. <laughs> you know? Yes. And that's the hardest thing, Paul, you know, it took me years. It's t and it, it, look, I'm not the finished article, nowhere near the finished article. Most high willing. I have another 30 plus years on this wonderful plane of existence. Um, and I don't think I'll ever be the finished article because it's impossible. I'm constantly going to be learning, which I sh you should be. And I always say, it, try and learn at least one thing new a day, at least one new thing a day. Challenge yourself, whether that be, you know, learning a, a greeting in, in a language. That was one thing I, I started off doing is learning a greeting every day in, an, in another language didn't last very long but <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just it's a challenge yourself ultimately that's what that, that's what it's about because getting back onto the spiritual path i've noticed before being <laughs> you know i mean i always knew that there was a you know a creative force um obviously i still don't have a a, a obviously with this the tetragrammaton with no vowel placements etc but I knew that there was something. Um, I didn't necessarily link it directly back to the Bible. I knew that there was a creator of the Bible, but I was just real kooky back in, you know, real kooky. I, I, I had all kinds of thoughts and visions of, oh, yeah, there's a creator, and it's like a giant kind of fishbowl kind of thing, you know, like the snow globes kind of thing. <laughs> And there's just, there's just a guy, you know, a creator force, and he's just got loads of snow globes everywhere, you know, just, yeah, yeah, this is, this is what I'm going to do with this snow globe. And, you know, I had all, all kind of little different bits and pieces, but get, get into that point and, and, and realizing, you know, the, 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 the connection and the spiritual warfare, the battles, etc., cetera, um, and, and protecting yourself and guarding yourself and understanding energy. Um, and, and doing as much as you can to, to, to do unto others as others have had to do unto you, um, you know, try, try and you, you, your best to be the best person you can be, affecting as much change as you can in your immediate vicinity. Yeah. No, and absolutely. then I noticed that the, 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 the brick walls that I used to face became little speed humps that you can go over in third gear, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it's an you know, analogy. You, I like that. You know the, the 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 battles and the challenges. Like how how's it going? Oh man, you never guess what. Oh, how's it going? Oh, well, wonder fields, absolutely wonder fields. I, it, it's just it's just like oh, this has happened. This is what we need to do. That's it. Oh, woe is me! Oh, 
Oh, boy, you never guess what? I've got to change my two tyres on the car. It's going to cost the £200 each. Oh, my God. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, woe is me. No. You've got a saving fund, right? Because you're smart enough to know that your vehicle, things happen in it. So you should have a little saving account saying vehicle. Yeah, here you go. I've got two grand in there, man. Let me just, I'll pay the tyres. Yeah, not a problem. There's that old uh, v- uh, verbiage, isn't it? A failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Exactly. And, um, you, know, you know, it's funny you, you say that because um, I'm terrible with planning and organizing money. I am. You know, I just said, <laughs> I don't think about it. I, I just don't. But my wife is a serious planner. Yeah, man. And she, she has all our money in these perfect pots for every scenario you could ever imagine. Already <laughs> pre planned and covered for the next year or two. You know what I mean? And it's kind of so. I am now in that safety net zone where if my car does break down, we, it's all right. We already have a savings pot for that. It's kind of yes. it's already sorted. We've already budgeted yeah. for it for the year. <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> and it's kind of. I'm so thankful for that because it's, it's what I needed. You know, yes. I, I needed that, and and having that done, like you say, it it the precious kind of the money is a big problem for a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. Of course, you know, major. It's, it's one of the major issues for a lot of people, and it's what stops you from being able to feel free enough to have the time to think about these type of things we're trying to talk about today. So if you can get that sorted first, then yes, you know, you really are helping your mind relax to the mm. point where you can be open enough to start thinking about other things outside of immediate survival. Yeah. Because that's where they want yeah. us, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah. They want us in that mode of constant survival. How am I going to pay the next bill? Mm-hmm. You know? And it takes, mm. it takes work on our behalf at the end of the day. It's like I said, forward plan. And to think about that money, make sacrifices too to have the money there spurred and think about what may come and what, what's coming forward. So that's, that's definitely valuable information you just shared there. And, and again, a positive attitude can go a long way as well. It's the, look, it's the only way, Paul, it is the only way. How, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm not bad. You know, you notice, you know, the, the people, us over here, the Brits, <laughs> we, we respond, oh, I'm not bad. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? <laughs> so you're not, speak... you, you're not good then. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. And I, though, again, w- w- when you wake up, you know, when, I'll use the, the, the full analogy as I always do. When you stir, you don't just wake up, do you? You stir first. Mm-hmm. You stir, you blink your eyes, you adjust your eyes to the light. Uh, you might wipe your eye, you know, yawn, stretch, whatever you do. And then you start to get up out of bed, isn't it? <laughs> that, this is all a process. <laughs> this is all a process. Um, and life is a process. You have to, you have to. And you, the key thing, I want to go back to that sacrifice. Hmm. In the times we're in at the moment, especially in, in the UK, where it is ridiculous what they're doing to us. I don't, I, I, I am, my heart goes out to the people who are on benefits and stuff, like the real, the real poor people. And I say that genuinely, the real poor people, not the, the people who are on benefits who are taking their liberties, hmm. the real poor people who are having, like, got the meters, they've got, you know, it's like 15 odd pounds to rent them damn things. Hmm. And then they've got to put the, the, the like a minimum of ten pound in. I'm sure you can't put like two pounds of credit in and all that. But that wouldn't even go anywhere anyway, based upon how high the utilities is. But look at where they are. They're in a place where sacrifice. <laughs> I, I don't know how much more sacrifice than these poor souls can do. Oh, absolutely. There's that too. Yeah. I mean, and maybe we can get into that actually for the second half of the show now because we have gone over an hour. But the absolute state of of the uk right now mm-hmm. in every facet and even the world it's not this isn't isolated just to the uk you know this, every, every country has the same issue it's getting bad like it's it's and it's a slow burn creeping type of bad as well where it's yeah it's just a little a little bit every month mm-hmm. to the point where we're in boiling water and we never noticed yes you know and never mind the fact that people are just dropping dead like flies <laughs> getting cancer just out yes. of nowhere for some unknown bizarre reason we're not allowed to speculate or think about you know <laughs> just mm-hmm. it's, and you know the nhs is always at capacity it seems even though they're, they're practically empty you know and it's kind of something's off 
And I think we can feel it in the air, can't we? Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you you talk to a lot of people, you know, you have a lot of back and forth. What's like the major issue you've noticed going wrong right now in, in let's let's talk about British culture. I want you to get together.